Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. I'm glad that you are all here joining me today. Thank you so much for being here, whether or not you're watching live today as I'm filming. Um, today is actually Monday the 2nd of August 2021. So if you are watching now um, live, you'll see a little red live button up the top. So it'll be up, wait that way, <laughs> up the top there. Um, if you're watching the, um, hi Cameron, great to see you. <laughs> if you are watching the replay, thank you so much for being here. Um, or perhaps you're watching on my YouTube channel later on. Thank you so much for watching there as well. And if you are watching on my YouTube channel, if you would like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, um, that would be fantastic. If you like what you see, I'd love it if you would subscribe. And then if you click on the little bell icon, which you'll see down the bottom there, um, where the subs little subscribe um, uh, button is, then you will um, be notified of all my future uh, videos that I post up and I'm hoping to post up a few additional ones coming up soon so look out for that a uh, huge smile from Cameron that's great fantastic um, yeah so I have got some things to show you today some things to share with you um, and a really cute project today uh, to uh, walk through with you um, which I have prepared some of which um, I've actually prepared a few additional steps of that ahead of time because it's a big project um, with lots of pieces so I've prepared some of that in advance so that we're not here all night <laughs> so as you're jumping on say hi hi Tina Marie hi Rose I can see Leslie's jumping on now too great to see you all ladies thanks so much for being here and of course Cameron is, is here as well thanks for watching Cameron um, it's great to have you all here so it is a super exciting week this week we have got well today is the last day of our designer series paper sale so um, oh hi Betty thank you for joining us it's great to have you here hi Rose great to have you here too so today oh hi Judy she Judy says she can't watch for long oh she's at the doctors and about to go in no worries Judy feel free to catch the replay I've got an awesome project for you all today um <laughs> Cameron nodded and said of course fantastic um so yes the last day today of the designer series paper sale from the annual catalog 15% off these papers that you can see here. So there's quite a few there. There's even a Christmas pack there. It's trimming, tidings of Christmas. I keep forgetting the names of it. Um, yeah, so fantastic offer if you haven't already had a chance to um, grab some of those designer series papers while they're on sale. Um, be sure to go over to my online store and grab those straight after my um, Facebook Live today. So I'll pop up my um, my shop link shortly when I put the camera down on my desk, which reminds me I need to grab that down. And I didn't write down my new host code. So I'm going to have to write that down on a sticky note. Usually I have that printed off for everybody. In fact, you know what? I wonder if I can print it off quickly now and perhaps my lovely assistant Amber will bring it to me. Let me just see if I can quickly print that off now. And then I can um, put it down on the desktop when we tip the camera down. So let me see, I'll click on print. Not sure what size it's gonna print out at. So we'll see. Usually I print it from my computer and then I can, I've got more um, options on my computer and I can choose the size. Not so much if I'm printing from my iPad though. Hi Robin, great to have you here okay let's have a look so we want oh we don't want that we want that and we want yeah we can have oh let's see let's see what other sizes we have um oh, i don't have much i don't have many options on my ipad for sizes so let's go with that i'll print that and hopefully amber will be able to um, bring that in to me 
Um, if you are on amber, perhaps if you could just trim it down for me before you bring it in, that would be super helpful. Thank you so much. Um, we've got a couple more jumping on now. Who have we got here? Let's have a look. We've got, I'm just scrolling. We've got Julie. Hi, Julie. Great to have you here today. We've got Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Great to have you. And Kathy's here as well. Hi, Kathy. Fantastic. All right. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to bring up this, um, this Facebook Live on my iPad so that I can watch all of your comments there. It's much more easy. Oh, much more easy. It's not very good grammar, is it? It's easier for me to watch your comments um, on my iPad rather than on my phone. Because if I watch them on my phone, I tend to get a bit distracted. <laughs> so I'll lose my train of thought. So let me just see. I'll just bring that up. Great. Okay, good. And I'll remove the comments off my screen of my camera so that I don't get distracted while I'm talking to you. Um, I can still see them when I'm looking down. Fantastic. Great. We've got a few people here today, which is awesome. So it is a super exciting week. As I was mentioning, today's the last day of our designer series paper sale. These papers are from the annual catalogue and there's nine of the packs there from the annual catalogue that are on special. So um, if you haven't had a chance to grab those yet, go over to my online store after this live, grab um, some of those paper packs and save yourself 15% off each one of those that are on special. Um, now, not only that, tomorrow is a super exciting day because tomorrow we have got the launch of our new mini catalogue. So this is the July to December mini catalogue, but it is launching on the 3rd of August. I know that's a little bit confusing, um, but Stampin' Up! had to delay the launch of that for a little bit just because of COVID. There was some delays in shipping and so some of the products weren't available um, and they didn't want a whole heap of stuff to be on back order or non-orderable. So they held off launching. Um, and so it's launching tomorrow on the 3rd of August, 2021. And it'll go right through until the 3rd of January, 2022. My goodness, that sounds really weird to say, doesn't it? 2022. Um, so super exciting. I can't show you the inside of the catalog yet um, until tomorrow when it launches, but I can show you the products. So I've got some brand new products to share with you today. Not only that, but we also have celebration launching tomorrow. And this is super exciting because this is the second celebration for this year. So Stampin' Up! have blessed us with a second celebration this year. So that's super exciting. Um, and this goes from the 3rd of August until the 30th of September. Now, if you're not familiar with celebration, let me explain it to you. Um, with celebration, there are three ways that you can earn free product. So you can shop. So with all any purchases over $90, you get to choose a product from the celebration brochure. And there's lots in there to choose from. There's also products in there that you can choose if you spend over $180, um, as we call those level two items. So there's some of those as well. Um, so that's one way that you can um, shop or you can earn free products is to shop. The other way that you can earn free products is to join during celebration. If you join Stampin' Up! during celebration by purchasing the starter kit, um, you get to choose one of the free bundles that's listed on page, I think it's page 19. Yes, if you have a look in the back of your celebration brochure on page 19, there is a whole heap of bundles listed there from the mini catalogue. And when you join during celebration, you get to choose one of those for free as well to add to your starter kit. When you um, purchase the starter kit, you choose $235 worth of product. That can be from the mini catalog, from the annual catalog, from the kit selection. Um, and then you only pay $169, plus you get that free bundle, plus you get free shipping. So it is a great time to join Stampin' Up! during celebration. And I would love to have you join my wonderful team. I have such a wonderful team of beautiful women. Um, these, these ladies, I have made such beautiful friends in this group um, and they've all made friends with, with each other as well. It's a lovely, lovely community of crafty um, people 
Um, I say women because we don't have any men in the group at this stage. Um, not to say that we might not down the track. That's okay. It's open to men and women. Um, and yeah, and we just have a great time together. We inspire each other with our creativity. Um, we share our projects with each other, which is super exciting. Um, I do creative challenges each month and give out prizes. I recognize my team and I give awards and I give um, vouchers and gifts and prizes. I love, I love spoiling my team. Um, and it's just a really beautiful community. And then not only that, you be part of the wider Stampin' Up! community as well. So you get to make new friends from all around the world. Um, you get to join Stampin' Up! only, or Demonstrator only Facebook groups and the website, Demonstrator only websites. So we get lots and lots of insight. We get brand new product early and new catalogs early. We have Demonstrator only events for those that want to attend. There's just so many amazing things. And do you know what? I'll just. I've probably said this many times, but it's so true, and so I like to always um, tell everybody that joining Stampin' Up! is one of the best decisions that I ever made, and I have made the most beautiful friends around the world, not only from my team, but also around the world, and I never realized that there were so many beautiful people out there <laughs> that are like-minded like me and so passionate. Um, and crazy about their craft like I am that love it as much as I do and um, yeah just so many beautiful people in the Stampin' Up! world so it's really blown my mind it's one of the most um, amazing things that I never expected I just joined for the discount originally and then yeah it, it went from there so when you join with Stampin' Up, um, as I said, you can just join just for the discount. You don't have to sell products. That's okay. You can just purchase for yourself for your own hobby. We call those happy shoppers. So I have lots of happy shoppers in my team and they love shopping and they're very happy. And some of them are here today with us as well. Some of my beautiful team are here joining us today for this live, which is awesome. Hey, Jenny, how is it down in Tassie today? We had, uh, we've got, we've, I think the weather, actually, I haven't poked my nose out the door today, but it was, a, it was nice and warm yesterday. Um, a couple of days before that, it was a bit cooler, but, um, yeah. So anyway, so if you would like more information about, uh, joining my team, um, please send me a message and I would love to answer any questions that you might have. Um, there's a, a lot of people get a bit anxious about making that step and, um, joining because they they have so many questions and they're really unsure but i love to answer your questions and um, give you all the information so that you can make the decision if it's right for you so um yeah so anyway i love what i do and i'm so thankful that i can share it with so many people so it's the best part of what i do is um sharing that with others so um all right i have got some ex other exciting things to um, share with you now with the mini catalog so as you know whenever we get a new catalog that comes out we get a whole heap of new product which is always super exciting but we also get a whole stack of new designer series papers that's what we call our patterned papers if you're not familiar with the term designer series paper um, and whenever we have a new catalog coming out i do a paper share because there's so many packs of papers that come out that it can end up being quite costly especially if you're not yet a demonstrator um, to purchase um, one of each of those packs of paper so to make it easier for people to give them a bit of a sampling of each of the paper packs i do a paper share so you might have seen and i'll re i'll make sure that i repost it this week as well that um, I might even repost it tomorrow or maybe even tonight um, I posted up last week I think it was about our pa my paper share that I'm holding now as part of my paper share I'm only doing the Christmas papers so I'm doing a Christmas paper share there's some other papers in the catalog as well but if you like those you can purchase them separately but the Christmas papers are ones that we use a lot when we're making our Christmas cards and our Christmas projects, getting ready for Christmas. So I'm doing a Christmas paper share. So I have got um, a paper share there. Um, what you do is you there's a link and you click on the link and you go through and you fill in your details on um, a Google form and that's private just for me. Nobody else sees that. 
and then um, I get your details and then um, yeah we arrange payment etc etc and then I order the papers I um, prep them all and then I send them out to you and each of them is in individual um, bags labeled so that you know which paper pack they are and um, if you want to order more of them you know which ones you want to order so be sure to check this out have a look and read all the information it tells you how I cut the papers when they'll be available um, how many you get in the um, the share now I need um, four people per share because what I do is I cut each pack of papers into quarters so you get a quarter pack of each one of those papers that are in the share and I've got six Christmas papers that are in that paper share from the mini catalogue um, the I'm just trying to remember the RSVP I think it's coming up soon let me just see yes I had the RSVP as this uh, the fifth which is Thursday yes so Thursday is the um, cutoff date for that paper share just so that I can order those papers and get them out to you as soon as possible so um, yeah so please look out for that if you're interested in getting your hands on some of that beautiful um, Christmas paper all right now um, as part of my um, or what I do um, I run classes each week, uh, each month. I have a technique club that I run each month. I have usually a product-based class each month, and that's always different. And then I also now have um, a creative kit night each month as well. So, oh, hi, Kimberly. How are you? All the way from Minnesota. Oh, it's 1.10 a.m. over there. Oh, my goodness. Are you up crafting late, Kimberly, or are you a shift worker? That's super late, although not so late for me. I'm usually up at that time here as well. I'm usually up till about one or two in the morning, <laughs> usually because I'm crafting away or working or, yeah. <laughs> it's great to have you. Um, so anyway, what I was going to let you know is... Um, just a couple of days ago, I advertised my next upcoming class and we are going to be using the Campology stamp set in that class. So check out that in the events or if you scroll back down in my, um, my Facebook business page, you'll see it advertised there. And um, I've actually targeted these projects towards the men in our life but they can also be used for the nature lovers. So women can also, you can also make these cards for women who perhaps love nature. But here in Australia, we have Father's Day coming up in September. So that's what I had in mind when I designed these cards. There's three awesome cards. And in the event, there's a little bit of a sneak peek of each one of those projects. So you'll get to see those. Um, but it's a fantastic class. And basically what you do is um, you use the link that's in my event there to purchase the stamp set. And then I send you a video tutorial and the kits to make the projects absolutely free. So look out for that. Um, that's how I run my classes. I get you to purchase the product and then I give you the kits for free. Um, if you do want them posted out to you, you do just I just ask you to pay for the postage fee. Or if you're local to me in Western Sydney and you would like to pick up your kits, you can come and pick them up. Um, we're just doing a contactless porch pickup at the moment because um, we are in lockdown, so we can't be socialising or things like that. So um, I leave them in a container out on my porch with your name on them and you can come and pick them up and then that way we're not coming into contact with each other. Um, so yeah, so um, if you would like to register for this class, the RSVP for this one is Friday, this Friday, the 6th of August. The class itself is actually on the 14th of August, but I need time to be able to um, prep the kits for you, record the video, etc. So, um, yeah, so look out for that one if that's something that you might be interested in as well. All right. Um, now, I've got some things to share with you. So as part of my team, we, um, we have a team swap or we had a team swap using some of the brand new products that are coming out in 
the mini catalog and celebration now I um, have received all of my swaps so I would like to show them to you and share them with you and you might get some new ideas and also too this will give you a little bit of an insight into um, the projects or the sorry the products that are coming out in the new catalog so I'm gonna it's gonna be a bit noisy because I've got each of them still in their little plastic bags to protect them but I also asked each team member to let me know what products they used as well in their project so that I could um, share that with you all as well. So this first one, so if I think some of my team members who are part of the share or part of the swap, sorry, are here with us today. Um, not sure if all of them are, but some of them are definitely here. The others will probably catch it on the replay. Um, because some of our team members are actually, what's the time now? Oh yes, they've been homeschooling their children because we're in lockdown at the moment and children, the children are off school and so they're all being homeschooled at the moment. Um, so, um, what was I going to say? Yes, so they're probably wrapping up homeschooling and doing what they need to do, etc. Um, but usually they catch the replay. So the first one I'm going to show you is a beautiful card using the Peaceful Cabins and Cabin Dies from the new mini catalogue. And this one was made by Tina Marie Elliott. And Tina Marie is here with us today. So this is a beautiful card with this beautiful little um, cabin. How gorgeous is it? So cute. And she's added some of the dies here with the trees, which are beautiful. And I love the, um, the black and white um, theme as well, which is super fantastic with just the pop of color isn't it awesome and then she's used the layering circle dies to um, make that little peekaboo window so you look to the the um, cabin on the inside and this is actually a trifold card so you can open it all the way up and then you've got an extra little cabin there inside isn't that awesome so cool well done Tina Marie that's a beautiful card well done. And it looks like it's all snowy there on the ground, doesn't it? So it's really beautiful. Um, and I think in this particular, I don't actually have this stamp set yet, so I can't show you the stamp set. But in the um, the stamp set, it does sort of look like the, the snowy theme. And um, is this the one as well, Tina Marie? It comes with a fence, I think, as well, doesn't it? So... Um, yeah, it comes with lots of other dyes and, and there's a fox, I think, as well and all sorts of things in that one. So wait until you see that one in the catalogue if you haven't already seen it. It's really beautiful. Um, uh, you never knew they had names. Which, which is that? Oh, yes, Tina Marie said there's a fence and a fox in the dyes. Um, what was it that you didn't know that had names, Tina Marie? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, hey, Athena. Oh, you just finished work. That was good timing. Fantastic. I'm just sharing some of our team swaps with everybody. All right. So this, um, oh, the Peekaboo Trifold card. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if Peekaboo, it's, well, we can call it a Peekaboo. I'm not sure if that's the technical term for that type of card, but Trifold, yes, definitely when it opens up. Um, in three pieces like that is pretty awesome. Um, this next one uses the Happy Holly stamp set. The designer series paper is the painted Christmas stamp set. Um, I'll show you the card actually. This is by Robin Falang and I think Robin is with us today too, Robin. Um, Robin, uh, I just received your card today, Robin, so I was super excited that I received it in time to be able to share it today with everyone. But how beautiful is this? Look at this little birdie. So pretty, and this designer series paper is gorgeous. This is one of the papers that's in my paper share as well. So super pretty. And um, Robin has also got on there um, the gold holly leaves, which I hadn't seen. I actually don't have any of those yet, so I hadn't seen them till today. They're beautiful. And they're actually really, they're, they feel softer than what I was expecting. I was expecting them to be really thick and um, hard, but they're actually really delicate. They're really, very pretty. She's got the matte decorative die uh, dots, which I do have. I have some of those, these ones. They come in beautiful colors. And she's used some of the red ones there for the berries. And then on the tag. And 
this um, black and white gingham ribbon, I have to get some of that. As soon as I saw this on Robin's card today when I opened it, I'm like, oh my goodness, I need that ribbon. <laughs> I'm a sucker for ribbon but and gingham too. Love this ribbon. It's super pretty. So well done, Robin. It's a really beautiful card. So, um, oh, Amanda's here. Hi, Amanda. You made it. Fantastic. I'm just sharing with everybody our beautiful team swap cards. So yours is coming up. Actually, yours is next on the pile, Amanda. All right, so take Amanda's out of the plastic. And I will... Oh, Amanda has typed up her product list. When we do um, swaps, I get our team members to let me know what products they've used so that I can share that with everybody. And um, so Amanda has this beautiful card with the um, the reindeer on it and the reindeer is silver embossed and it actually has a little saying on it that it's a bit hard to pick up with the lights in here at the moment but it says um, uh, oh what fun from the song from the Christmas song oh what fun it is to ride you know that one. <laughs> so this is really beautiful. I love these deers. They're absolutely gorgeous. So Amanda has used the Peaceful Prints Designer Series Paper, which is one of the free celebration items. And I've got that here um, at the moment. I'll show you that in a moment. She's used the Layering Circle Dies. So um, she's she's got sort of like the... She's die-cut the circle. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Amanda. You've die-cut the circle out of the Designer Series Paper and then just offset that and you've got a piece of black designer series uh black cardstock behind it to make it look like a little window there behind but i love how that's offset like that really cool idea that's really really effective and then she's popped up this circle on dimensionals so that it looks like that it's um standing up off i think it's on dimensionals yes it is <laughs> so it looks like it's standing up off the card um she's used the peaceful deer bundle so that's the stamp set and punch. She's got silver embossing powder, powder, forever flourishing dies, rectangle dies, and then she's used memento ink, simply elegant trim for the gold bow, um, gilded gems, and yeah, and it's beautiful. Well done, Amanda. Thank you so much for your beautiful swap card. So there we go. Um, Oh, everyone's loving all of these swaps. Hey, Glenda, how are you going? Great to see you. Um, Amanda said it was so much fun creating these swap cards. Oh, that's so good. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. <laughs> Tracy loves it. She said, oh, so cute. Beautiful card. Everyone's loving all these swap cards. Well done, everybody. Now this one... Just take this one out of the plastic too. Sorry for the noise. This one was made... Oh, I have to open up the paper for this one to read all the products. So this one was made by one of our team members, Nadine. Nadine Holtam. And Nadine has um, this beautiful card. Now, Nadine has also used the same stamp set and um, punch bundle as Amanda and the same designer series paper but look how different it is and she's used different ribbon but it's using the same the same stamp set and punch bundle and same designer series paper but look how different they are isn't that cool it's great to see some different ideas using same products so um, Nadine has used um, real red cardstock peaceful prints designer series paper um, the deer is from the deer bundle, both the stamp set and punch. And she's used soft suede cardstock for the deer. And the antlers, now if you can see the antlers, they are, she's punched those using the Be Dazzling specialty paper from the mini catalogue. It's like, people are describing it that it looks a bit like glow mesh. It's like a glitter paper, but the glitter on the paper is so big. It looks sort of like a glow mesh. I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, really great detail to have as the antlers, I reckon. I saw that and I thought, oh, that is such a great idea. It's really beautiful. Super, super sparkly. And I believe 
that um because i didn't get that at first i was worried that the glitter would come off but apparently it doesn't unless you're punching or die cutting it might come off just a little bit near the edges but um yeah it actually doesn't all flake off because i checked that with a few people before i did um did consider whether or not i would get it <laughs> so yeah so really beautiful um the greeting is from the Peaceful Deer stamp set in the real red and the banner Pick a Punch in basic white and real red for the label up here. And she's used Wink of Stella on the deer as well. So thank you so much for all of that, Nadine. Isn't that beautiful? Really beautiful. So we have got some great swap cards. Now these will be um, fantastic to give us ideas for other projects and great to share with you all. I've got the paper here too. Um, this is the, the paper that Amanda and Nadine use, the Peaceful Prints paper. Um, so I might show you that when I tip the camera down and you can see all the different prints on there. But yeah, this is one of the brand new, actually I might be able to do it this way. This is one of the brand new celebration papers that you can earn for free with um, a $90 order. And I'm just having a look to see. There are some beautiful papers coming out. You'll be so excited if you haven't already seen them. And if you love designer series papers, I'm just separating all the papers. I'm going to hold them up and show you so that you can see them all. They're absolutely beautiful. And there's so many different patterns in here too. And then I've got one more card to show you from the swap. All right, let's see if I can hold them up. Ta -da! Look at that. Look at all of those. Aren't they gorgeous? There's a couple of red ones there, red on red, which is a bit hard to see. <laughs> but aren't they beautiful? And there's a couple there that are green on green. So we've got some trees and we've got some spots and we've got some, um, what's that? Sort of like arrows. Arrows? Oh, um, like pine needles, I think they are and some snowflakes we've got some gingham some more deers some stripes some plaid some more deers it's just beautiful paper and this one you can earn for free with a 90 dollar order from tomorrow so with celebration it goes from i think i mentioned this i think i might have but just to reiterate um, from the 3rd of August until the 30th of September. So you have two full months to earn um, those free products. And if you don't already have the Celebration brochure and the new mini catalog, um, and you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you're working with, let me know because I would love to send these out to you. Um, I can only send them to people that are in Australia, however. Um, same with all my classes and things too. Um, it's all for people who live in Australia. So I'm sorry if you're watching from overseas. Um, I love to have you joining me on my Facebook lives, um, but I can't unfortunately sell product to you. But if you don't have a demonstrator um, in your country and you're from another country, you're watching either my uh, watching me on Facebook or on my YouTube channel and you're looking for a demonstrator in another country, let me know as well because I have friends um, who are Stampin' Up! demonstrators all around the world and um, I can definitely um, uh, hook you up with a demonstrator in your country or I can find out. Um, if I don't know somebody specifically where you are, I can um, find one who's nearby. So there we go. And the last thing I'm going to show you is my swap card because, of course, I participated in the swap. So let me show you my swap card. I'll have to take it out. Uh, everyone's saying beautiful card. Beautiful card, Nadine. Glenda says beautiful card, ladies. Fantastic. Yeah, everyone did so well with their swap cards. They're amazing. Now, I'm going to show you my swap card, and um, I have used on mine the Sweet Stockings um, products. So it's a whole suite of products. I think I showed them the other day. I used the whole suite of products, and this was my swap card. So my cute little animals in their little Christmas stockings on the mantle by the fireplace. <laughs> And this is the one we're going to be making today. So I've got all the products to show you. I've got some tips and tricks of using these products to show you. Um, 
and I really love this card it's so super cute and adorable if you love animals then um, you'll probably love this one um, there's lots and lots of pieces there's 28 pieces in this stamp uh, in this project so I prepared some a little bit earlier so that I wasn't cutting and die cutting everything for today otherwise we would have been here all night <laughs> it took me a long time to make all my swap cards so um, uh, Rose said, very clever girls. Um, Kathleen says, love all the cards. Fantastic. Tracy said, oh, beautiful, so cute. <laughs> so, yeah, so we had five participating in our card swaps this time. So it's super fun, super exciting to join in card swaps. You get lots of great ideas from each other. Um, and it's great that we can spin off those ideas. We can case them directly, which is case stands for copy and selectively edit or copy and share everything it has two meanings so um, yeah so we can use those projects to um, copy and get ideas um, and those of us that have businesses we can use them in our businesses so I'll be popping all of those up on my uh, once I watermark them with each person's um, name um, I will be popping them up on my um, blog and um, I'll probably pop them in my um, business page as well so that they can be shared with everybody but I like to watermark them with each person's name first so that um, you know that is that is their watermark on on their project so um, Oh, Robin said it was great fun being part of the swaps. That's fantastic, Robin. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It is really fun being part of swaps. Um, Robin said, loved all the cards, gave me some great ideas. Fantastic. That's what it's all about. All right. So how about if we get crafting? Because I've got this big project to make with you all. And I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, and it's going to take a little bit of time. So we need to get started. So, okay, if you have any questions as we're going along, um, feel free to pop them in the com comments. Um, that's okay, Tina Marie, you don't have a watermark. Some of the other girls don't either. So I will actually create one for you and put it on your card so that when I post it on social media, people know that you are the creator of that project. Okay, so never fear, it's all good. Um, oh, Amanda says she's looking forward to another swap. Yes, well, we will be having another card swap this month in August. I already have that planned. Um, I just haven't posted about it yet, but I have it planned in my mind. So we will be having another one. So you're welcome, Tina Marie. <laughs> All right, so how about I cover up the camera? I'll tip it down onto my desktop and we'll get started. Um, now, I don't know if Amber is still online or not with us. I did print my new host code but she hasn't seen it so I'm going to find a marker and I'm going to write it on a sticky note so I can put it down on my desktop hang on one sec I've got to go out of the comments for a moment because I have to find my host code so that I've got that ready when I put the um, camera down so that if anybody wants to order with me this month then they've got my host code it is on my business page as well so it is B. Oh, I should write what it is first. Hang on, this is host code. Host code. I don't have the neatest writing, so my apologies in advance. B Q. It's a long one this month. Q B N three A M. Glad I've got these written down because I would never remember them. <laughs> They're so long. <laughs> and this one's even longer than they normally are. All right. So there we go. We've got that on a sticky note. So I'll be able to um, pop that down. Let me just double check. Okay, great. Good. I'll stick that down. And I will go back into my comments on Facebook. Hopefully I haven't lost them. There, they're still there. Good, good, good. All right. Let's cover up the camera. We'll get everything set up down on the desktop and we can get crafting. Okay, here we go. It's going to be a little bit clunky for a moment while I just adjust my camera stand. So just bear with me for one moment. Okay, I'll adjust the lighting and we'll be good to go. 
All right. Um, that's just a little bit. Oh, that's pretty straight today. Wow. Amazing. I actually got it straight first time today. That never happens. <laughs> so there we go. There's my host code written on my lovely orange sticky note. I'm sorry. I will have it printed up ready for next week. Um, so if you are looking for my online store, there are two ways that you can find it. You can go to my blog, which I usually direct everybody to my blog because there's other creative inspiration there on my blog as well. Um, and there's other things where you can subscribe to my newsletter. I always forget to remind people to subscribe to my newsletter. Um, if you're not already subscribed to my newsletter, I would love for you to subscribe to my newsletter and then you will get all the updates from me of all the Stampin' Up! goings on um, and what's happening. Um, I put projects in there. I put all different sorts of things in my newsletters and you can sign up um, or subscribe to my um, newsletter via my blog. There's a button at the top on the left hand side. You can subscribe there. Okay, so you can also find my shop button. There is also a join button. There's also a button um, with information about my technique club and some tutorials there as well. Lots of things on my blog. So go there. Um, if you would like to check out my demonstrator website, you can also um, get to my online store through there as well, which is mandywithabee.stampinop.net. So two different ways, either via my blog, Mandy's papercraftcreations.blogspot.com or um, mandywithabee.stampinup.net. Okay. Um, oh, hi, Navon. How are you? Great to have you here again. I love that you jump on every week. It's awesome. Um, ah, yes, you're in the USA. Yes. Um, St. Paul, Minnesota. Wow. Oh, we've got a couple here today from America. We've got... Um, was, what was the other... I can't remember the name of the other town or the other state... Kimberly. Kimberly was from Minnesota as well. That's right. So you're both from Minnesota. Oh, there you go. Do you and Kimberly know each other, Navon? Just wondering if that's how you both found me through each other or not. Or is that just, um, that's just a coincidence? <laughs> oh, that's your best friend. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, I'm glad that you both referred each other. Not sure who referred who, but I was, it's great to have both of you here. Oh, that's lovely. Fantastic. Um, you might not be able to buy things through me, Navon, but you can um, you can get ideas from my Facebook Live, though. So, so that's good. <laughs> um, all right, so you can certainly use my ideas from there. Right, now let me show you, first of all, this suite. Now, as I said to you, I can't show you the inside of the catalogue yet because um, we're not, we can't show it until it goes live. But I can show you the products from the sweet stocking suite. So sweet as in S-W-E-E-T. This is a sweet stocking suite, S-U-I-T-E. Um, and let me just show these to you. Now you can see I've chopped into some of my papers. I'll just move my little card over to the side for a moment. Um, so let me have a look. Oh, what I was going to say to you, Navon, too, is um, the tutorials that are on my blog, if any of those are um, interesting to you, if you're interested in any of those, you can actually purchase those because um, they are a video um, and some of them have a PDF with them as well. Um, some of them are old um, products that might have retired but the ideas because it's a um, they are a technique tutorial the technique itself still um, is the same it's just that it's uh, might be different products but I do sell those to people overseas as well um, my tutorials so yeah keep that in mind if any of my tutorials are um, interesting for you all right so yeah I've chopped up some of these papers as you can see to use in my projects today now these are the, the reverse sides of some of those papers I'll just pop those to the side and I'll show you these how cute are these stockings now the dies that come with this set so we've got the designer series paper we've got the stamp set 
we've got the sweet little stocking stamp set we've got the stocking dies which i'll take out because we're going to um have a look at those oh navon says she loves anything to do with cats fantastic <laughs> you're an animal lover too that's awesome um so these are the dies then we also have the ribbon so this is um let me remember pool party striped um grow grain ribbon which is beautiful and then we've got the matte decorative dots which i showed before and i love these because they have like an ombre um gradient in the colors for each of those i'll just move that light back a little bit in each of those colors so they're really really fantastic you get this array of different colors but they're still sort of in the same color range well they're the same color but just lightened so are they awesome and something i saw um, a demonstrator show the other day that if you go from corner to corner so if you go from the top left corner to the bottom right hand corner that's actually your gradient so that's your darkest color up there and down here is your lightest color and that's the same for each one of those colors so darkest to lightest isn't that cool i didn't even realize that before so that's so cool so that's the whole suite um, now this stamp set i will go back over the papers in a moment but this stamp set is so super cute the images are shown at 85 percent on the cover just so they can fit all of the images on so they're a little bit smaller on the cover than the actual stamps themselves um, but look how many stamps you get in here you get a total of 22 stamps in here um, and there's just they're so versatile so many different ways you can use them you can use the stockings without the animals if you don't like animals um, you can use the animals um, with little hats we've got little presents there you could use the presents in the stockings or the presents beside the stockings you've got candy canes you've got um, spruce sprigs you've got um, oh what do you call that um, what's the one you stand underneath at Christmas time if you're standing underneath it at Christmas time you have to give the other person a kiss I forget what it's called um, somebody will remind me I think that's what that one is we've got some stars we've got some we've even got some little cross stitches here how cute are they and then you've got some really fun sentiments there as well uh, mistletoe thank you Tina Marie that's the one mistletoe yeah so super super cute stamp set yes thank you Tracy mistletoe yep that's the one so we've got mistletoe and a little spruce sprig as well um, so these can all be colored um, which is fantastic you can color them in whatever colors you like um, the dies cut out each of those so we've got dies for the stockings the animals the presents the hat each one of these little ones so the candy cane and the um, the greenery but as well as that you've got some additional dies as well I'll just move these bits off here you've got um, a star you've got um, a bow you've got the top of the stocking the toe of the stocking and the heel of the stocking you've got some holly and the holly berries and then you've got this awesome big tag and there's a couple of small uh, another smaller tag and then these are the two presents so there's so many dies in this set actually let me have a look and see it's 22 dies in this set as well now not only that not only does do they cut out the um the stamps and you get the additional dies but the um, some of the dies coordinate actually with the designer series paper as well so each one of these stockings here coordinates with one of these dies so you can even just cut out the designer series paper and use the stockings from the designer series paper so isn't that awesome so on the other side of that one we've got some um, green background with some yellow stars which is fantastic I like this one we're using some of that one today um, I'm just going to pop the papers over to the side as I show you each one we've got how cute this is my favorite this is my absolute favorite this cute little doggy with the Christmas lights wrapped around him and the little um, cat in the box and there's a little mouse carrying a box but I just love this little dog how happy does he look super cute he's a little golden retriever really really cute then we've got this one with um the 
a small we've got a couple of different dogs here and we've got a little um we've got the mouse and we've got the little not chipmunk not gerbil not guinea pig um what is it in america you call this little i forget i'm losing all my words today um not gerbil what's that little that little animal it's the one that's on the front of the stamp case, this little guy. It's not a chipmunk. It's a hamster. That's the one. Hamster. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tina Marie. Um, the dog. Oh, the dog won't be happy when the, its owner catches him. Yes, with all those, <laughs> with all those Christmas lights wrapped around him. Exactly. Yes, could be a bit dangerous too, couldn't it? Wrapped around his neck. <laughs> Hamster Julie, yes, and Athena, thank you so much. Little hamster, so super cute. And you've got the little cat in the stocking there. I love that paper too. That's really cute. Then on the other side, you've got this awesome pattern. Look at this. Some of those Christmas stockings actually would be awesome. That's one of the Christmas stocking dies. Would be fantastic cut in this paper too. Look at the detail on that. That'd be super fun. Um, then we've got, that's the other side of that one. This one's really funny too. Um, poor Pussycat's not looking too happy with having the um, reindeer antler headband on. The little puppy's looking pretty happy with himself having the wreath on. And then we've got a little budgie here holding some mail. So I love that they've just incorporated so many different animals into this paper. This one's super cute too. I'd love to do something with this one as well. Um, then on the back of that, this one would also be great with those stockings or great as background paper. Um, that one I already showed you before. And this one, oh, that's this one, um, has got another little cute cat and a little corgi dog. And the little corgi dog's got a Christmas Santa beard on and a little Christmas jumper, so that's pretty cute. And a little fish with, I don't know if you can see, if, if I hold that up, in the fish bowl i'll tilt the light that way in the fish bowl there's a little christmas tree and a present <laughs> so cute <laughs> so cute and you've got little christmas bubbles there so i don't know who designed this paper but they did a really great job i think with this paper we're using some of this one as well the green on the back and we're using some of this one for one of the christmas stockings and on the other side there we go we've got those christmas lights so how fun is this paper now, if, you, if you're not an animal lover, um, you can still use these because you've got the reverse side of the papers that don't have the animals on them. Um, and you've got the Christmas stockings and the presents and things like that. But my project I'm making today is using the animals. So I apologize to anyone who might not be an animal lover. Um, but if this isn't your thing, that's okay. It might give you an idea. You might be able to um, substitute the animals for perhaps the presents or just leave the stockings plain. I'm going to try and attempt to get my paper back in the bag now, aren't I, on camera? <laughs> Why am I doing this? Uh, I like to sort of bend my paper up a little bit usually to get it back in the plastic. There we go. I did it. Look at that. Yay. So I keep all my chopped up bits in there as well so that I've got the whole, like all of the paper um, pack pieces together um, and then that way I can always um, find them. The other product I forgot to show you that we also have in this range is the Jolly Felt. Now I had a play with this and this is so much fun and I was nearly going to design this project, well I started out designing this project with the felt and then I changed direction and decided to use the designer series paper. But you've got the three beautiful colours there in the felt and it is super fun to play with. When I was playing with the felt, I'll just show you, um, put that back in the packet. I, um, I put all my pieces actually in my stamp case so that I had them all together. I trialed different glues to put together all of the felt pieces to just experiment and see which one, which type of glue was best to um, adhere the felt if you're putting the the toes, the heels, and the tops on your stockings. And I tried um, multi-purpose liquid glue. It worked okay. I did a few Santa hats as well. It worked okay, but I found with the um, 
the multi-purpose liquid glue because it's quite a, uh, a very liquidy glue and uh, this is the one I used with it and I'm not sure if you'll pick this up on camera but you can see it in person the glue did um, soak a little bit into the felt so you can see it a little bit showing through um, I tried with tear and tape that was it held it but the felt pieces didn't sit down nicely this actually might be the one is that the one I put tear and tape on I'm not sure um, the felt didn't sit down nicely on the or the heel and the toe didn't sit down nicely on the other piece of felt using the tear and tape although it held it it just didn't sit nicely I found the best type of glue to use was a tacky craft glue um, for you can see I've been making all different pieces I've got them here in my little in my little um, pack there so yeah I found that the um, the tacky craft glue was the best type of glue so I just used it with um, on my silicon craft sheet and just picked it up with a toothpick um, to adhere my different little pieces and they stuck really well they stick down nice and flat um, yeah but I found that that worked the best so if you're wondering about how to use that felt um, that's the best thing and the felt works beautifully with our dies so as you can see I've die cut all of those with our um, beautiful dies that we have in this set and it cut out beautifully I didn't have to recut anything or it just die cut beautifully so so there you go so look out for that felt too it's lots of fun to play with so I will do something with these ones but on a different project all right we better get started on this project or we won't get it finished so I'll just pop this back into my stamp case so that I've got that all there together alrighty now uh, sorry uh, am I back sorry my camera froze then there was a call coming in sorry about that um, oh what about fine tip glue um, you could try it Julie but the fine tip glue is much more liquid than the multi-purpose liquid glue so I'm thinking that the fine tip glue pen will probably soak through um, thanks Amanda yeah a call came in and it froze my um, feed so I apologize for that um, it was one of the I've been getting a lot of those um, calls from different I think they're like spam calls or something um, coming in from Melbourne and sometimes I get them from Africa and all different places they're coming from all over the place so um, my daughter's been getting them too so from random numbers so I think it's just one of those call center places or something <laughs> um, uh, yes glues I'm not sure about the um, fine tip glue pen Julie I think it might be too liquidy but you could certainly try it and see how it goes um, yeah and let me know how how you go with that all right um, so I've pre-prepared some pieces um, yes the additional products that I was talking about I have used for the brick wall of the fireplace I've used the brick and mortar 3d embossing folder um, and I've got the fireplace cut into that brick wall and to use uh, to do that I've used the rectangle stitched um, dies and I'll show you how I do that um, I've also got some Stampin blends that I will show you the colors when we go to do that um, but let's get started I'll pop my little card over out of the way so I don't get any ink on that and all right so as I said there's lots of pieces in this project there's 28 individual pieces in this project so it did take me a long time it kind of evolved as I was um, playing with it and I ended up um, oh you block them as soon as you hang up that's a good idea Tina Marie the only thing is sometimes because they're Melbourne numbers and I do have relatives down there in Melbourne I'm unsure um, of if they're ones that are coming from overseas then yes I do but if they're ones coming from interstate because I've got relatives interstate I don't always block them straight away in case it is one of my relatives and they're going to leave me a message or something but um, but yeah I guess if they don't leave me a message then I could block the number hey because then I will know that it's a dodgy number all right so let me tell you some of these pieces that I've got here um, where are my wait I have to find my my measurements here they are 
Alrighty. We have got, just got this off camera over here. All right, we've got a base of Cherry Cobbler. So this is just a normal size card base. Here in Australia, we use metric. So this is half of an A4 sheet. Um, it measures 21 centimeters by 14.85 centimeters. And I've got that scored and folded at 10.5 to create my card base. We're gonna have a landscape orientation this time on this card, so it'll open um, that way, okay. Then I've got a piece of um, Whisper White, and I've already put some measurements on here for you so that I could tell you those as we were doing those when we get to that step. Um, this piece of, oh sorry, not Whisper White, Basic White. This piece of Basic White is 14.25 centimetres by 9.9 .9 centimetres, and we're going to die cut with one of our rectangles, we'll get to that. I've got a piece of, um, this is the fireplace piece, or the internal part of the fireplace in basic grey. And this one is, do, 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 do. Um, no, not that one. Hang on a minute. Oh, here we go. 10.1 centimetres by 5 centimetres. And then this is our mantle for our fireplace. And this is from the... Um, in Good Taste designer series paper. So this is some of the wood from the In Good Taste. On the back, it's got the um, the white painted with a bit of pink through it. Um, and this one measures one centimetres wide by 13.2 centimetres long. That's going to form our mantle. Um, I've got a label piece. I actually punched, I actually made three in case I muck up my stamping when I do it. I always like to have spares, but you actually only need one for the project. Um, this is in basic grey and this is um, uh, 8.5 centimetres long, or it was 8.5 centimetres long by half an inch wide so that it would fit into my treasured tags pick a punch. To punch the ends and round those ends off using the um, the picker punch okay and that's what we're going to stamp on to our sentiment and then I've got all of the little pieces for the stocking so I went ahead and die cut these just to save time because it, there was so much die cutting and then we will match all the pieces up so I've used some of the designer series paper there and then each of the stockings will have a stocking topper, a heel and a toe. So for the green stocking, I've, I'm going to use a cherry cobbler top, toe, oh, whoop, toe, that way, toe, and the heel. Now when you do the heel and the toe sections, the stitched part, actually I'll show you on my card, the stitched part goes on the inner in a part of the like facing inwards to the inside of the stocking not on the outside i'm not sure if the lights or if the camera will pick that up if i move that light does that pick that up oh i think you can see it better on the lighter colors yeah okay so the stitching is on the inside like that and with the um, topper of course you've got the scalloped edge which faces down there like that okay um, yeah, so then we just match up the colours. So we want um, the green. This one's going in the middle. That one's going over there. So we match all of these up so that I can glue all of those together in a little bit. All right. Okay, so that's how the, the colours are going to go. Then we've I've pre-stamped two of the um, spruce or the pine... Um, sprigs so these ones here I've stamped two of those and I die cut those already because there's only one die of that and so I knew that would I'd have to do multiples um, then I've done the holly berries and or oh, there's the berries and the leaves and then we've got a couple of the beautiful little bows so I've got two in evening evergreen and one in the cherry cobbler and for the little holly um, berries they're in cherry cobbler and the leaves are in evening evergreen okay and these colors are cherry cobbler old olive and pool party cardstock for the um, detail on the stockings all right I also so we can actually start with putting those together 
Um, I've also pre-stamped our little animals just so that that memento ink would have a chance to dry but I will color those with you and then we'll die cut them and put everything together but I pre-stamped them super easy um, these are photopolymer stamps so I do have them on the block still so I'll show you so I put these all on the block I haven't done my sentiment yet and I'm going to heat I'm going to heat emboss that so we'll do that together um, but yeah so I pre-stamped these ones and then the, um, because they're photopolymer stamps it is best to use your um, foam stamp and pierce mat underneath your cardstock when you're stamping that and i'll show you that when we go to do the sentiment um, just to give you a bit of cushioning you'll get a much nicer um, stamped image that way all right so i went ahead and did all of those steps just to save a bit of time so let's bring in our silicon craft sheet and we'll put together these stockings first and that'll give them a chance to dry while we color our um, stamped images and then we can start putting everything we'll do the die cutting and start putting everything together so these extra little pieces i'm just going to pop them back in the little packet so i don't lose them we'll just work on our um, stockings to begin with There we go. All right, um, put that up there. Okay, and we'll get our little stockings ready. Okay, so I'm going to use my multi purpose liquid glue to adhere all of my bits to my stockings. And I'll just do it like this so that I I like to lay them out this is how I did it when I was putting them all together because I had to make um, several of these when I was doing my card swaps and so I had everything all laid out and I did a big production line when I was making multiples of this thankfully I only had to make five <laughs> so um, yeah if I had to make more than five I think I would have been um, struggling a little bit because there were so many uh, so many pieces in in each card so all right so we're just going to whoop, use a bit of glue I should have maybe got out a new glue but that's okay and we're just going to line that up to the top of our um, stocking there and just lift that up oops just to check at the back to make sure it's better to see if you're looking at the reverse it's better to see a little bit of that cardstock edge around the um the stocking because that top part is a little bit bigger a little bit wider than the size of the stocking so there we go so we've got that one and then the large piece is the toe put a bit of glue on there and the good thing with the multi-purpose liquid glue as i always say is because it is um, liquid glue you've got that little bit of wiggle room so you can move that around um, to get that positioned in the right spot and then our little heel so I should show you on the dies which dies I've actually used to die cut these there we go so there's one done where's our dies okay so for these pieces we've got the um, the top of the stocking or the stocking topper this part here whoops um, the heel is whoops sticking to my finger this little piece here and then the toe is this one here okay so you've got those three pieces there for the stockings they're really not hard to put together they're just a little bit fiddly and time consuming but if you don't mind spending a bit of time on a project then this is a great one to um, and it's a special one like this because there are so many pieces I'll probably only make a few of these I probably won't make a whole heap of these ones because it's very time consuming but these will be like special ones for special people maybe for my close family or um, you know my sister or um, aunties or something like that they're not ones that I would mass produce to send out all of my Christmas cards because I send out so many Christmas cards. So anyway, oh, here is a question for you all. 
generally each year, how many Christmas cards would you normally send out each year? I'd be interested to know. And of those Christmas cards, do you send all handmade cards or can you not make that volume of Christmas cards so you also have to send some um, store-bought ones as well? Did I do that right? Oh, you know what? I've die cut the wrong stockings. I just realised. I've done, I'm going to have to die cut some more because I need two of the large ones and one medium one. I didn't use the small one. Ah, silly, silly. I got confused. All right. I will get my mini machine because now I've got all the wrong colors in the wrong sizes. That's okay. That's all good. We can just quickly do some more on my mini. At least it's not everything. <laughs> I've still got my topper there for my, my um, pool party one, so that's okay. Alrighty, so we need another, uh, another large one and a medium one. I have to make sure that I pick the right papers now. And I've got my bits, so I need the red stripey one for the large one i don't think that's going to fit on there nope i need another piece all right that's okay i need a piece of that and a piece of that oh i'm a silly billy aren't i i thought i was doing so well being so prepared ahead of time well there you go all right i'm just going to Oh, it's better to fit better that way or that way. Actually, it will fit better that way, I think. Okay, close your eyes, everyone. I'm going to hack into my paper. Oh. <laughs> With my scissors, normally I would do it on my trimmer, cut a nice edge, but I don't have time right now to do that. All right, and a medium-sized one in the pool party. Or we can just go straight across with that one. There we go. Okay, I'll trim that down. Ah, oh boy, I can't believe I did that. I think because when I originally made this, I did do it in the different sizes, the three different sizes, and then I decided that um, the small one in comparison to the other two looked too small, and I didn't like it with um, this design that I come up with so I changed it and changed the sizings of them so when I've gone to recreate it today I've gone back to my original um, my original layout which was all of the sizes so ah oh, so let's see how have we got how many have we got we've got Tina Marie says she does around 80 now Rose said, less each year, but all handmade. Well done. 80 is a lot too, Tina Marie. Um, oh, Deborah's here. Hi, Deborah. Uh, sorry, I didn't see you jump on. Deb Deborah does 60 to 70, all handmade. Wow, well done. Um, Athena said, her list is shrinking as well, but yes, all handmade. Wow, well done. Glenda says, Yes, I used used to hand make and send about 30 each year, but last year I cut the number down to 15 for friends and close family. Yep, yep. Um, sometimes we run out of time, don't we, to get them all done. Um, Robin said about 100, but will be less now that she's not working. And Robins are all handmade. Wow, you guys are amazing. Well done, I'm so impressed. Um, Tina Marie said it used to be a lot more... But, oh, people are dying on her. Oh, that's sad. There's been a few funerals this year, hasn't there? Not nice. All right, so there we go. So we've got those ones. Now I just need to die cut the, because I used this one. That's okay. I'll keep this little stocking for another project. But I need to get out some more. Wait, did I keep some out? I think I kept some out. Oh, I did. Lucky. I kept out a scrap of my old olive. So I can cut another lot of um, toppers, toes, and heels. 
well, here, I only need one of each of those. So that's good. All right, all right. Well, you get to see some of the process now of the die cutting. So I'm using my um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine this time. Um, I will need to get the large machine back out in a moment though too because we're going to be doing some embossing um, and I've got a large embossing folder so I'll need to use the large machine for that. So I'm just going to measure how much cardstock I need and I'm going to do a little snip snip. There we go, so we'll go across here. Okie dokie. So my tidy organized desk is now not so tidy. <laughs> stuff going on everywhere I've had to pull out additional things now and it's all good it's all fun isn't it it's all part of it all right sorry it's shaking I can see it's shaking the whole table I'm so sorry but the little mini machine is so handy it's great to have on the desktop um, oh Deborah said she's already started with her card her Christmas cards well done Deborah that's fantastic um our oh, tina marie started hers as well awesome great and glenda said she makes about 100 every year and she sells them to friends who like handmade christmas cards to send out oh fantastic that's a great idea as well all right so i'll get my take your pick tool um and keeping it real mandy yes i am i certainly am julie <laughs> I'm certainly not perfect. I make mistakes too, just like everybody else. That's right. Alrighty. So when you are taking these out, you do need to poke them out of the dies um, because they do stick in there quite, because it's a solid shape, they do stick in there quite tightly. So with all of our dies, um, they do have these little holes in them where you can poke out um, the pieces. So... So that's really good. I haven't actually put this die set onto my magnetic sheets yet. Most of you that watch me regularly know that I usually like to put my dies onto magnetic sheets, um, but I haven't got around to doing this one yet. I haven't had a chance to, been super busy lately, um, but I will, and especially with this one, because there's so many tiny pieces. Um, but I did trace around these with my um, Sharpie, I just used a fine tip Sharpie and traced around each one of them so I knew where to put them back on the sheet so that they'd all fit back on there. So I was so worried, or so that I knew if I'd lost one because I was so worried I was going to lose one. All right, so let me work out now which size. So that's the other small one. We don't want, or medium size one, we don't want that. I'm going to double check this time. Yes, that's the one. And yes, that's the one. Okay, and that's the right one, isn't it? Yes, okay. All right, let's start again. We've got one done, so that's okay. Two. Thankfully, I realised before I got too far, though, because otherwise I would have been tearing my hair out. But I'm not tearing my hair out because it's all good. There we go. Okay, let's keep gluing now. All right, now we'll do our little... Um, so we're doing uh, old olive cardstock onto our pool party Christmas stocking. There we go. Do our little toe. Um, so yeah, so you guys send out so many. I, um, oh, I can't remember how many we sent out last year. I think it was about 80. Um, mostly handmade. But because I usually send them out to my team as well, and last year I also had workmates that I usually each year for my workmates, um, I not only make them a handmade card, but I also um, make a gift for them, a handmade gift. But I'm not working there anymore at the preschool. I'm working from home now with my own Stampin' Up! business. So I won't have those additional... Um, gifts to make this year I'll just have my team gifts to make this year so that'll be good be less less to make so do any of you make handmade gifts as well for your family or friends I love making handmade gifts I think it's super special to receive a handmade gift that someone's put 
a lot of work into. Oops, 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 oops. Um, what I used to do too, um, and Julie will appreciate this one because Julie um, loves to bake and Julie's got her own little baking business as well, uh, as well as her Stampin' Up. But she, uh, I used to make, and I didn't do it last year, but a couple of years prior to that I did, I handmade or homemade some lovely baked goods. I didn't do it last year because of COVID and everything, but I handmade some baked goods and then put them into lovely, uh, wrapped them up all beautiful. And, um, you know, I made tags, and uh, beautiful handmade tags and toppers and things like that for the packaging. So I decorated all the packaging up beautifully with my Stampin' Up! products and they looked lovely. But depending on what COVID is like this year at Christmas, as to whether or not I do that this year or not, and those types of things I do for usually my neighbours. I like to give little gifts like that to my neighbours. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Tina Marie said, this year's boss gift will be interesting. It will be because I'm, a, I'm my own boss now. Because <laughs> I used to always buy a special gift for my boss every year, um, who, is a, who is a good friend too. We became very good friends. Um, but yeah, I'd always buy her something special for Christmas, but, um, yeah, she's not my boss anymore, so I won't get to see her at Christmas time. So I have to buy myself something nice instead, hey? <laughs> I'll still send her a card, though, because I still do talk to her from time to time. I check up, I, I ring in to check up how things are going, um, at the preschool to see if they're going okay, if they need need anything or need any help with anything so but they've been going really well since they got their new admin their new mandy <laughs> um and she's been doing exceptionally well i believe she's very very efficient so so it's been really good i had one training day with her and then she just um took off on her own and she's been going great guns i believe I'm using my fine tip glue pen to use uh, to adhere the little details onto my stockings because they are super tiny um, and I just don't want to over glue them with the fine tip oh, with the um, multi-purpose and I think my glue might be blocked hang on a minute let me just I'll put the pin back in see if I can unglue that uh, 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 uh. one day I actually pulled apart the every single piece of the top of this there were several parts to it actually to um clean because it was so badly blocked now i can't even see to get the pin in i don't have my glasses on wait let's put my glasses on <laughs> maybe i can see here we go um oh come on go in there why aren't you going in there we go got it yay so give it a little jiggle and see if that frees it up but one day it was so badly clogged that i could not get it flowing at all so i pulled the whole thing apart and all the glue there we go all the glue was um stuck up inside the the actual lid part not in the tip itself and it took me a long time but i got it working again so that was good all right, so I'll put a bit of glue on there. And the green bow is going on the red top of that one. All right, um, so we've got Athena usually makes the gifts. Beautiful. Robin mostly makes her gifts as well. Lovely. Um, Deborah said last lockdown she knitted scarves for her close friends. Oh, that's a beautiful idea that would have been a lovely gift and Deborah is currently knitting bags for her female friends oh fantastic so you're a knitter as well Deborah that's awesome very good I'm sure they will love them um, especially as they've been lovingly made handmade my mum used to be an avid knitter and a lot of you who've been watching me for a while will probably already know that because I used to talk about um, mum a fair bit. And um, <laughs> Tina Marie says she has big shoes to fill. Oh, my replacement, Tina Marie? Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think she's got big shoes too, actually. I think she's very, very efficient. So 
I think she's doing very well. My my replacement. I was there for 13 years, so you know, you learn a lot in 13 years and you um, learn your own systems, but usually when new people come in, they develop their own systems of doing things and make changes and all those sorts of things. I know I did when I first went there. I made a lot of changes from the previous admin as well, so it's bound to happen. Actually, even when I went in there, it was first week. It was first first week that she was there, I went in to um, do a bit of training with her and there had already been some changes that had been made. I'm like, okay, that was quick. <laughs> I was like, I haven't even been gone that long. No, it's all good. <laughs> it's bound to happen. Um, yeah, so anyway, talking about my mum. Um, yes, mum was an avid knitter too, Deborah. And, um, oh, you won't, you won't probably know this yet. Uh, my mum sadly passed away last year in February. Um, so last year was a bit of a write-off for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, she was an avid knitter as well, but she was almost blind by the time she passed away with her diabetes. Her diabetes took her sight as well as many other complications that she had from it. But, um, she was still knitting her coat hangers though, right, almost right up until the end. I think the last few months she didn't do any knitting um, because she just was too unwell. But um, prior to that, yes, she was. She could just manage coat hangers still. And so she was making coat hangers. Um, I'm looking for my, what did I do with it? My Wink of Stella. I had that here. But yeah, she, back in her earlier years, she used to knit beautiful jumpers and babies' hats, babies' blankets, and she was crocheting. Actually, I've got one of her, you know what? I've actually got one of her crocheted rugs here. This is one of the last ones that she did. I snaffled this one. Well, actually, she gave it to me, but it was only probably about 18 months to two years before she passed away. Uh, maybe 18 months this is one of the last ones that she did i had this one out and had it on my lap last night because i was cold here in my craft room um, but this is one of the ones that she crocheted one of her last ones that she did before her eyesight got too bad um, and it's really pretty i love the colors in this one it's sort of really me really pretty um soft colors and yeah so i love that i have that and i was remembering my mummy when i had that on my lap last night yeah oh glenda's mum is 97 and still going strong wow that's amazing glenda she must be super healthy that's fantastic good on her does she do any handicraft glenda does she knit or crochet or sew or do paper craft or anything like that so i'm just adding a little wink of stella to my bows on my little stockings and I'll add all of the bling at the end, like all of the um, rhinestones, I'll add at the end. There we go. Um, yep, and then I'll add some Wink of Stella to the hat later, to the Christmas hat. But I'll let that sit to dry for now. All right, so I'll move those to the side. Um, oh, very pretty. <laughs> uh, thank you, Julie. Yeah, that rug is very special. Very, very special. It's one of the last ones that mum knitted. Um, beautiful. All right. Okay. So I'm going to show you some of these other steps now. So we're going to make the brick wall for the fireplace. So what I did, I um, gave you the dimensions of this one earlier. It's 14.25 uh, do, 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 by 9.9. .9. I'm going to bring in my stitched rectangles and we're going to cut the um, fireplace section out of the bottom and I'll show you how I did that. So I used the third smallest rectangle so if you can see those there i use this third smallest rectangle okay and whoops i turned it on its side um so i did some measurements first i'll hold them up to the camera just in case you want to take a screenshot of that um, so i measured 2.9 centimeters in from each side and 4.4 centimeters from the bottom to the top there 
where I've put that little mark and that's kind they're my marks to line up this die um, to die cut that so once we've die cut this we are going to emboss it but it's important to die cut this section out first because otherwise um, if you emboss first and then die cut once you run it back through the embossing uh, the machine the second time it will depress some of that beautiful embossing a little bit it'll flatten it down and we certainly don't want that so it's important to um, do this part first so I'll line that up with my little marks there and um, I'm looking at the edge along here to try and make sure that that's straight I am going to get some washi tape to hold it in place because I need this to be straight I don't want this to be crooked all right so line that up that looks fairly straight now i don't want any of this washi tape to tear the cardstock so i'm going to stick it on the inside because that's the part that'll be cut away hopefully if this will stick this die has been um used a few times so it's a little bit warped sorry if i'm getting my head in camera i'm not sure if i am but i am putting my head over a fair way there we go all right so like that now i'm going to use my large um, die cutting machine because um, this won't fit through the mini machine the feed on the mini machine is much smaller so i'm going to run this through my large machine i'm going to put it at a slight angle because i've got a straight edge die if i put it straight through like that it um, gets a little bit caught in the rollers and can cause like a, a speed bump so if you put it just at a slight angle it'll feed through much better i'm just going to quickly do that off camera just to save a bit of time there we go so oh no oh I used a plate that was dirty I've got that's okay I might be able to turn it over and use the other side yes I think I can only I'll have the stitching on the wrong side is that going to make much of a difference I don't think it will once I emboss it oh that plate I'm going to have to get rid of that plate I used this plate the other day as well I noticed that what had happened was when I had traced it's from one of the um, the cloud dies that I have. I think it was the border dies, and I traced it onto the um, onto. Oh, I traced around it onto my magnetic sheets. That's right. But I must have got a bit of. I moved it on the magnetic sheet, and so the die itself got some ink on it, and it mustn't have been dry or something when I run it through the machine the first time, and so it got on my plates. Now every time I use that plate, I get the ink on my cardstock. Super annoying. So anyway, but you get the idea, that's what you end up with, okay, is your um, little um, fireplace cut out like that. I'll just pop this piece back on to my die sheet. I'll keep that because that's got my measurements. Um, and I'm going to flip this chimney, this fireplace piece over so that we don't see those marks. Now ordinarily, because it's got the stitching on there, and the stitching depresses into the cardstock what I'm going to do because it's not marked on the other side so what I'm going to do because the um, edging the stitched edging on this side is rough because I'm now on the reverse side I'm going to use my bone folder to just run along the edges there to smooth those down and then once we put that through the embossing folder like that'll look fine there we go so then that smooths them down so it doesn't look like it's back to front now. But yeah, you know, you do notice a difference because on this side it's nice and smooth where it um, pushes the stitching down into the cardstock and this side it's sort of raised up a little bit. But that's okay. We can still work with that. All right. So now we're going to use... Oh, I'm really going to have to get rid of that plate. You know what? I'm going to take it out now. And yes, this is the culprit. Be really careful. Make sure your plates are clean. This one has got the ink on there and I tried cleaning that off with a wipe and it wouldn't clean off. I might actually give it a go with, um, before I toss this plate out, I might give it a go with some alcohol and see if it comes off with some alcohol and then give them a wash in um, some dishwashing detergent. So I won't chuck it out just yet. I'm just not going to use it though until I fix it. Okay, so I'll take out the brick and mortar 3D embossing folder. Um, 
Glenda said um, her mum did, but she has glaucoma now and is nearly blind. Oh, that's a shame. But her memory is fantastic. Oh, that's so good, Glenda. That's awesome. Not good that her eyesight is failing, but it's good that um, that she's got a great memory. So I'm sure that you can still talk with her and about lots of stories and things. So that's great. All right. So now with this folder, the bricks. When you open, when you get this folder, um, this kind of looks like the direction that the design should be going on the folder. But in fact, the bricks run this way. So I'm going to turn my folder sideways and put my cardstock in that way so that the bricks are running across ways. And I'm gonna place it there in the middle so that the bricks look like they're going straight across. And I'll just double check that to see that they do look as though they are reasonably straight. Let's re realign that a little bit, there we go. Um, and so where you've got the Stampin' Up! logo, that's the front of the folder. So you know that that's the way that the um, image will emboss. Okay, so I've got my the front of my cardstock facing upwards where the logo is. I'll bring in my um, machine, my large stamp, stamp and cut and emboss machine. I just need to move all of these other pieces out of the way first. There we go. All righty. Okay, so for embossing a 3D embossing folder, we need our base plate number one, our embossing folder. Now remember that when you're feeding an embossing folder into your machine, you should always feed it in with the folded edge going through first, otherwise your um, embossing folder could crack and break. Okay, so oops, sorry about that. All right, and then we've got our number four embossing plate, which is going on top. And then we just take that through. There we go. Got plates and machines and dies and paper everywhere <laughs> there we go so there we have the outside part of our um well it's like the chimney isn't it it's like the fireplace really but that's like the back wall part of the fireplace all right so we've got that piece done now we can adhere that to our card base i'm just going to run my um embossing folder uh, sorry my embossing folder my bone folder along that crease again just to help that cardstock to sit down a little bit this is quite thick cardstock so it wants to keep popping up now what we're going to do is this is going to be sitting here and this piece is going to be popped up on dimensionals and this is the fireplace piece now this goes underneath here so that you have that dark it looks like the fireplace like behind you know sitting behind the wall like recessed um, but what I need to do is I need to work out where to place that piece because I want to make sure that that lines up along the bottom here along the bottom edge okay so that it looks like it's all you know one piece kind of thing um, so I'm going to add a bit of adhesive to that and then I'm going to I'm going to use um, multi-purpose liquid glue so that I can have that wiggle room to be able to reposition that if I need to and I'll line it up with the other piece over the top of it just to make sure that I get that where it should be. Okay, so so that I don't get any glue on the front of that, I'm going to turn that upside down just for the moment. I've got no adhesive on the white piece yet, but I know I'm going to be putting this down somewhere down here. All right, so I'm just going to sit it there for a moment and then I'm going to line this up over the top and use that as my border so that I can see that nice border around the edges. And then I'm going to wriggle my grey piece down to meet the border 
along the edges here. Make sure that's straight so that I've got that nice and straight. And with that liquid glue, that allows me just to slide that around a little bit. Down a bit more. There we go, because we don't want that gray piece sticking out from underneath. We don't want that sitting down lower than the white brick wall. There we go, that's not too bad. All right, now we've got that in place, we can push that down and put that to the side, let that dry, and we'll get some dimensionals for this part. So it is a bit of a process, this card, um, but it's a fun one to make. And if you're making multiples of it, um, it's great because you just do it in a big um, production line and just do you know each section at a time kind of thing and then it doesn't seem to take as long. It still takes long, but not as long, but it's super cute. It's worth it. It's worth the time and effort. So I will have two of these now to um, send out for Christmas and I might make some more. We'll see. I've got lots of other Christmas projects to make as well. So we'll see how we go. But this one is super cute. And it's, um, I've got lots of friends who love dogs and cats. So this one would be great for any of those friends. All right, so I'm going to remove all of the backings now from here. There we go. Oop, get rid of that one. So um, has anyone got any plans this year to use any of the Stampin' Up! Um, packaging for their Christmas gift giving? There's lots of cool... Um, well, there's probably going to be lots more ideas coming out now too. Now that the... the um, mini catalog will go live tomorrow and then there'll be more and more ideas going up on social media of using some of those products and they'll be this will be end up being heaps on pinterest and i love pinterest pinterest is my best friend <laughs> um now we're going to adhere this over the top if this card will stay still there we go um yeah so there'll be lots and lots of ideas but um I am hoping to use some of our the Stampin' Up Christmas, uh, some of the Stampin' Up packaging to make some lovely Christmas gifts. There we go. All right, so now we've got a bit of dimension on that chimney. Okay, so that grey piece or the dark part of the chim, the dark part of the um, chimney fireplace. Sorry, looks like it's recessed. There we go. All right, so now we can add our. Um, mantle for our fireplace now I was originally going to mount this up but because there were so many other layers happening I thought oh there's gonna end this cards gonna end up being too bulky so I ended up just sticking the mantle flat now I'm just gonna measure um, how far down I stuck that because I don't remember now two and a half centimeters there we go two and a half centimeters down from the top so I'm just going to with my pencil, I'm going to actually put a little mark. Oh, I'm going to measure that with my ruler and just put a little mark at um, two and a half. And I'll do the same on the other side so I can line that up and make sure that I've got that straight. There we go. So there is a bit of, um, a bit of measuring and things with this card just to make sure that you get things lined up. But it's really worth it. Come on glue. I think I'm going to need to get a new Tombow glue out soon. I finished off another one I think it was last week on my live or was it oh it might have been when I was filming a class I can't remember just in the last week I finished another one and um, I usually have two going at a time one that's getting low and one that's um still okay. All right, so two and a half centimeters, yep, to the top. So there we go. Oh, and it's got to go in from the edge, that's right. I was nearly going to stick that right to the edge then. Um, there we go. Um, slide that across a little bit. Oops. There we go. Okay, so I'm just 
wriggle that up a little bit just to hide those pencil marks and stick that down okay so we've got our fireplace all done ready to go we've got our Christmas stockings ready to go and we've got oh you know what I didn't do I didn't that's all right I can do that bit later um, we need to now color our little animals so I've pre got them pre-stamped I'm going to bring in a little bit of scrap paper just to put underneath um, actually I won't get scrap paper I'll use my mini grid paper I've got lots of that so I'll use that I like my multi my very multi-purpose grid paper not only good for the stamper artist but also good for um, putting underneath your projects and it's always a great idea to have your surface protected when you're coloring with Stampin' Blends um, because they will bleed through your cardstock and in fact I think I actually yeah I did too I stamped this onto um, ordinary basic white rather than the thick uh, basic white so it's going to bleed through much more all right colors colors that I'm using are um, let me remember now smoky slate so I've got light and dark of the smoky slate I've got um, oh I'm missing one light and dark cherry cobbler so that's the cherry cobbler combo I have got crumb cake light and dark for my little hamster and I've got bronze and I've got the color lifter okay so they're the colors that we're going to be using so with the um, the little doggy the little dog I'm only going to color one of each of these I just stamped additional ones in case I had any issues when I was coloring or anything like that um, but I will just do one of each so with the little dog I'm not doing any blending at all I'm just simply using the bronze on its own um, so it doesn't really need any blending on and if you don't want to blend with your little animals you certainly don't have to you could just um, just use single colors on them if you want to just be careful going around the eyes so that you don't color in the little white part of their eyes my bronze is starting to get a little bit shaggy on the ends I noticed too when I was doing this project so I'm probably going to have to order a new one soon once the brush starts to get too soft it's really hard to control the color and mine's starting to get to that point I don't think I have oh I might have a spare one I've got a few spare blends up there on my shelf I might have a spare one that I already bought before I'm not sure I'll have to check there we go so our cute little doggy such a cute little doggy there you go alrighty so there's our little puppy dog and then we'll do our little cat so a cat is going to be gray so with the cat, I don't know why I did the dog first because it's beneath the cat. I'm like below, sitting below the cat. Um, with the little cat, I'm going to give it a little bit of a, it's going to be like a bit of a tabby cat. So I'm going to give it a darker section there and here at the sides of the face as well. And then we're going to blend that down with the lighter colour. Just to look a bit, a bit more like a, a grey tabby cat. Because I used to have a grey tabby cat when I was a kid. I grew up with a grey tabby cat. Um, and I actually showed a project. Oh, I forgot to do the inside of the ears. Um, I showed a project a little while ago using the spiral die um, stamp. And my cat was the inspiration. And my little tie-dye shirt for that particular project so I spoke about my cat before so if you haven't seen that video and you want to hear my story about my cat feel free to go back and um, find that video or jump onto my YouTube channel you probably find it easier there than on my business page actually you can go to videos on my business page and pull up old videos rather than scrolling through my um, feed you can actually just click on the I think it's media it's under media and yeah and you can see old videos that I've filmed there we go little kitty do your little pause 
it's so funny, you know, like I, oh, I guess I was going to say I have, I didn't used to really like um, cutesy sort of stamp sets before, but I'm starting to like them more now. I did used to, I suppose. Now that I think back, I used to have a cute little um, porcupine, uh, no, was it a porcupine? No, hedgehog, little hedgehog stamp set years ago that was one of my favourites. Um, my favourite style though is still vintage, but I do find I am using more cutesy stamp sets than I used to. <laughs> oh, very funny, Tina Marie. Tina Marie said, in a cat's opinion, all dogs are below them. <laughs> I certainly didn't mean that when I said that though. <laughs> Um, I'm going to add a little bit of um, colour lifter to the cat just to... Actually, I probably don't even need to on this one. The other one that I did... Oh, I might add a little bit. The other one that I did um, before, uh, it went a little bit... The colour went a little bit heavy. And I added a little bit of colour lifter to the cat. But I probably got away with it a bit more with this one. It didn't colour as, um, as dark this time. We'll see how that turns out with the colour lifter and... If it doesn't look any good, I can do another one. Yeah, we'll see. We'll let that colour lifter just set and we'll see how that looks. All right, and we're going to do crumb cake for our little hamster, our cute little hamster. Um, what have I got here? I've got light. I'm going to do dark. I'm going to use the fine tip for the edges of my hamster and inside the ears because it's a much smaller image and the little feet. So I'm just going around the inside edge with the dark crumb cake and then I'm going to blend that with the light crumb cake. But just so we've got a little bit of shadowing around the edges of his face, his little chubby cheeks. I like his little chubby cheeks, they're very cute. And now I'll use the um, brush tip of the light and we'll just blend that down a little bit so that we don't have any harsh edges sort of showing on our coloured image but we've still got that shadowing there we go so when you're colouring with your blends it's great to um, colour in a circular motion it gives you a really nice finish and it helps the colours to blend really well doing it that way there we go cute all right, how's our cat looking? Oh, our cat's not looking too bad, actually. It's a little bit darker than my original one. Let's let's make his little... What's a cat's... Does a cat have a muzzle? No, not a muzzle. What's the what's their face what's the fat part called on a cat? I've gone blank. Muzzle? Not a muzzle. On a dog, it's a muzzle. I'll give it a little white muzzle. And we'll do the um, hat as well. So we're going to use some dark cherry cobbler around the edges of the hat or where we think there'd be a bit of shadowing on the hat. So I'm thinking there and probably here, there'd be a bit of shadowing. So the color would look a bit darker just there and then we'll blend that down with the light. You don't notice it as much on the cherry cobbler because it's such a rich color. Um, but if you look really closely, you can tell the, um, the detail in the color there with the dark and the light. Just blend that in a little bit and the tip of my cherry cobbler is getting shaggy too I'll have to replace that one soon as well there we go beautiful now I will add the um, I'm gonna add some wink of Stella to the white parts of the hat but I'm gonna do that after I've die cut it because I don't want the wink of Stella to then get on my um, plates so there we go so there we've got our little animals ah oh. I'm going to go in with my colour lifter and just push back a little bit of that colour. I just went out of the lines a little bit with the hamster. Just going to push that colour back in. So the colour lifter doesn't erase. You probably can't even see that on camera. But the colour lifter doesn't um, erase as such, but it pushes the colour. So if you have the tip in the direction that you want the colour to move, so I want to shift that. I went out of the lines a little bit there. So I want the color to shift back inside the lines. And I use the color lifter very close there to that section where I want to shift it. It pushes it back 
um, away from where you're using the marker, if that makes sense. So that's how the colour lifter works. Um, Tina Marie said, we're getting older and more sentimental. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> All right, I'll bring back in my mini. Oh, actually, before I do that, you know what I'm going to do? Um, I'm going to, because I want to save these other three image or these other four images. Um, and I don't want to mark up my cardstock with my plates. So I'm going to cut these out so that my plates don't mark those other images and ruin them because I'll keep them for another project when I make some more of these or maybe I'll make a different one might change it up so I'll keep these ones um, put them over there in the rest of the pile of stuff I won't say junk it's not junk craft stuff is not junk it's just lots of craft stuff <laughs> all right so bring back in my mini and my plates so I've got my number one my number two um, my my dog and cat actually let me swap them over that one's getting a bit warped I'll have to replace that one soon too so my cat and my dog um, are on the same piece so I'll pop them up there then I've got my little my little dude and his little hat actually it's, yeah it's his hat and I'll bring in the dies to coordinate with those and we'll line them all up. So we've got the kitty cat and I will washi tape these in place as well. Um, so um, a demonstrator in the US whose name is, um, uh, oh my goodness, now her name has gone out of my head. It'll come back to me. Um, she has shown this awesome post-it tape which you can use instead of washi tape and it lasts for much longer and you can use it over and over and over again to hold your dies in place and so I looked up on the Officeworks website to see if I could get some and order it um, but it didn't show up on the site so I'm thinking perhaps I probably need to go there at some point when we're out of lockdown and it's safe because it's not urgent so it's not it's not a um a requirement for me to go at this time so I will wait um, but yeah I'm gonna see if I can buy some of that post-it tape for holding my um, dies down because I believe that it's really really good and it's quite thick um, and it works it's better than using a post-it note because it's um, like it's sticky like a post-it note but you know when you use a post-it note you've got only a tiny little bit of sticky at the top of the post-it note but then you've got um, the whole rest of that post-it note that you would waste if you're going to be using that you know for your die cutting unless you've got the really little tiny ones anyway I'm gonna try and find some of that post-it tape I think it's called so I'm gonna look to see if I can find some of that at some stage so yeah watch this space I might have a new little tip for you with that when I get some there we go all right so we've got all of those in place we'll pop the top plate on and we'll take that through um, and because I mean I do have lots and lots of washi tape but some of my washi tape is more sticky than others and sometimes it does tear the cardstock you can dab it off on your clothing first to remove some of the sticky um, so that it doesn't tear your cardstock but sometimes I forget to do that and I'm in a hurry so but this particular one I'm using at the moment is really good because it's not too overly sticky all right so I'll replace all of my dies back on my die sheet so that I don't lose them there we go has anybody else got these um this sweet I didn't even ask that actually has anybody else got this one have you made some projects with this yet this is actually a great project that you could do sitting in front of the TV just sitting and coloring and die cutting all of these little bits if you had your little die cutting machine out there and just die cut all of these little bits and pieces and if you prep them all in advance then you could do them in a big production line like I did them when I was doing my swap cards 
when I was doing my swap cards, I actually had, um, um, oh, Robin says she has it, but she hasn't used it yet. Oh, good. Well, maybe you'll get some ideas from my project, Robin. Um, when I was creating my swaps, I was sitting here in my craft room, but I had Netflix running. So I was watching a bit of Netflix while I was um, creating. So that was good to be able to do that. All right. Now we can start putting everything together. Um, oh, no, we haven't stamped our image, our um, sentiment. We better do that. Let's do that. And then that's the last thing I think we need to do. Then we can put everything together. Um, I'll bring in my foam sheet and we need some Versamark. I've got my white embossing powder and my embossing paper sheets to tip the excess onto. And I've got my heat tool here, but I just need to plug it in. Um, I had my charger plugged in before, so my iPad. But I'll just plug this in. There we go. Ooh. Okay. So I've got my sentiment. I'm using um, Sending Lots of Love. And I'm just going to ink that up in Versamark. Stamp that in the center of my label, which I have pre-cut. And that's not straight. That's why I pre-cut a few others. Oh, I might still emboss it anyway, just in case. Uh, where are my other spares? There they are. See, this is why I did some ahead of time. In fact, I don't know that my stamped image, my stamp is on. Oh, yeah, it is. thought it didn't look like it was straight. Okay. Might need to get my head in the camera, everyone. So forgive, forgive me for a moment while I just get that in there. To try and line that up. Let's see if I did that better this time. That's better. So you just need to put your head in the camera and then it's all good. <laughs> Alrighty, so I'll pop those down on there. I'll do the other crooked one as well. It might not end up looking as bad as I think it does. Sprinkle on my embossing powder and I'm going to get my tweezers so that I don't burn my fingers while I'm holding this under my heat tool. Give that a bit of a tap. That looks all right. I'll just make sure that I get rid of any excess embossing powder that's sitting underneath there. In fact, I'm going to get my paintbrush and tap a bit harder in some places. It's a bit, a bit thick in some places. There we go. So that's one. Um, or oh, the other one. I think I've got more tweezers. Hang on. I've got a second set of tweezers. See, it's handy to have two. So we'll tap that off again. Oh, you bought the whole suite, did you, Robin? Fantastic. Yes. As a fellow dog lover, um, I'm sure that you will love playing with this suite. All right. I'll just get rid of that little bit where the tweezers were. That's tended to clump just there. There we go. All right. Good. I'll pop that one up there. I always tell everybody, especially when I'm doing my classes, if we do any embossing, I always tell my um, class participants to make sure they put away their embossing powder before they turn their heat tool on because otherwise you can accidentally melt your whole pot of embossing powder and then you'll be very sad because it does melt very easily. Okay, so I'll just warm up the heat tool for um, a moment just to get that nice and hot. And always a good idea as well to put the lid back on your Versamark so that the heat doesn't dry that out too. All right, and so then we'll just heat that. Now when you're stamping with um, the clear photopolymer stamps, as I said, it's a good idea to use the foam um, stamp and pierce mat underneath your stamps to give you a little bit of um, cushioning and a bit of give. Um, when you're stamping with photopolymer and you get a much especially I was going to say it's especially important when you're stamping sentiments um, because it's important to to get that nice cushioning to give you um, nice finished finish or a nice oh my goodness I can't speak now a nice finish 
on your um, stamped images, especially your sentiments. I think I just repeated myself. Anyway, you guys know what I mean. Yeah, so I think that one's the crooked one. So we'll put that one to the side. I probably won't use that one. This one turned out really well. This one actually embossed better than the other one too. So there we go. So there we've got our sentiment done. So we'll move this away now. Right, now I think we are ready to construct. Um, so when I stamped the um, animals, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but I used Memento ink. Memento ink is the one that you want to be using when you're um, working with Stampin' Blends, okay? Um, because it won't bleed. Um, you can either use this or you can use the uh, classic Stampin' Pads to stamp your images. Um, so sometimes I like to use Basic Grey or Early Espresso or even sometimes Soft Suede, depending on what I'm what images I'm stamping um, <coughs> excuse me and they work well with your stamp and blends I'm just gonna have to have a sip of water excuse me for a moment <coughs> oh, I've been talking so much now I've got a tickle in my throat <coughs> oh excuse me I'm so sorry all right we're going to attach our um, sentiment first with dimensionals. So we're going to pop that over upside down and we'll pop some dimensionals down on the back of that. Okay, we'll remove those backings and we're going to pop that down. Now, I know from my first card where I need to position this, so it's in the middle and it's just down a few millimetres from the top. It's probably two to three millimetres down from the top and that still gives me enough room to fit my animals. Does that look about right in terms of the sides? I think that's, that's pretty all right. Okay, so now I can position the um, stockings and the animals and I'm going to need some more dimensionals because I've just finished that sheet. Oh, just about. I've got a couple left on there. Um, let's see. Oh, no. I haven't. Oh, I might need to open up a new packet. Have I got some up there? No, I've got minis and I've got foam adhesive sheets. Oh, I'll have to grab another packet. <gasps> Bear with me one moment. going to close my blinds while I'm up. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'll open up this new packet of dimensionals. Um, this card does use a lot of dimensionals because there's so many um, mounted pieces. I'll just get one sheet from there. Pop the rest up out of the way. There we go. Okay, alrighty, now um, what we're going to do is we're going to put the stockings on first, so they're going to go in that order like so, and then we attach the animals. So we need to use, um, we need to be careful with our placement of dimensionals on here because remember this white um, brick wall is already mounted up on one layer of dimensionals. But some of the stockings are going to overhang onto this grey piece, which is flat. So we're going to need two layers of dimensionals if they're going to be attaching onto the grey piece. All right, so one layer on the white, two layers on the on the grey. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm going to start with the middle one first because I know that we're... I need to position this one in the middle first before I position the other ones. So I'll need two dimensionals at the top for that one. Then I'll need one. I might use a combination of my minis. I think I did that um, with my original one as well. Used a combo of minis and the large dimensionals just so that where there's a smaller section, you can just add the minis there. Might put one just there. And I just keep, I simply just keep on flipping them over to see how they're going to sit. Okay, so see now that's going to overhang on the grey part. So where that's overhanging on the grey part, we want to put two dimensionals under there. Okay, 
so two layers of dimensional. So one, and then we'll remove the backing and we'll put another one on top of that, like so. This is a really long live today, guys. I am um, have to apologize for anybody that needs to leave. Feel free to leave. Um, my lives normally go long, but they don't normally go quite this long. This is a super long live because this is a super detailed project today. But um, I hope that you will enjoy this project and I hope it will be worth it for you to stick around. All right, there we go. So we've got two layers, two layers, two layers. And then these ones at the top are all single layer. So we'll remove those backings. Oh, I'm getting dimensional backings everywhere. In fact, after I finished making my swap cards when I did the originals of these, um, I must have, I'm usually pretty careful with what I drop on the floor because of our puppy because she picks everything up. And I must have missed a dimensional and she um, found it. And so she was chewing, chewing, chewing. And I thought, what are you chewing? And then I had to um, scrounge it out of her mouth. And sure enough, it was a dimensional backing. I tried to tell her she can't swallow these things, but she doesn't listen. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to angle this like so with the hanging part about halfway, about halfway down the, um, the shelf. I want to call it a shelf. It's not a shelf. Mantle. That's the word. And roughly in the middle like that at a bit of an angle okay so there we go so we've got that one centered in the middle and then now we can add the other two in the same way so again we'll just um, check out where the dimensionals need to go just keep flipping them back over to work that out now this one is on the brick wall a fair bit so um, that makes it easier so that's only one layer on those sections and whoops, whoa, what happened there? Oh, I picked off an extra dimensional backing. There we go. And then we're going to need two on the heel. But I'm going to use minis on the heel because I'm not sure how far it's going to overhang. So I'm just going to do a double layer there of the minis there like so. And then hopefully that should be well enough supported. We could even put... A single another single mini here whoops just there and I want to I feel like I want to put something under that part there yeah I think we might put let's see that's gonna go there like that yeah I might just put a double layer here just so that it's not gonna sag I don't want it to have a saggy um, part there all right, so we'll just remove all of those backings. There we go. Oh, Robin said she got carried away so much with um, with her order. She said there was so much to choose. <laughs> yes, I know. Super hard to choose. There's so many beautiful products in the new mini catalog. I'm so excited for it to launch tomorrow. Um, to all of our customers. I can't wait for all of my customers to get their hands on all those beautiful products. Super exciting. And I can't wait to see what everybody makes with it, with all the new products too. That's the most exciting thing is seeing everything, um, seeing all the finished projects. So it's going to sit down about there so we can put dimensional under the heel and then the toe parts I think are going to need the doubles yeah need a double one there under the toe <laughs> oh thanks Navon Navon said so cute so cute she loves it ah uh, thank you I do love this one it's been really fun to create this one whoops I'll just get a second layer onto that one there there we go So, Navon, it must be really, really late where you are now in Minnesota. What is it now? About Is it 3 a.m.? Because I think um, 
when you got on it was about one or something or just after one so I'll pop that one down there. Oh, I've got those dimensionals a little bit close to the edge. You can see those ones. Let's see if I can get them off to move them back. Nope. Okay, they're staying there. And just see that I didn't put it quite in from the edge enough. Hopefully it won't be too noticeable. There'll be enough other stuff going on on the card. Hopefully nobody will notice. All right, there we go. Uh, 320. Oh my goodness, why are you still awake? How are you still awake? <laughs> Wow, he must be a night owl like me. I'm a bit of a night owl. I stay up late crafting. All right, so there's our stockings in place. Um, now, when I did this, um, the middle one I centered first, okay? But because they're all sitting at an angle, the other, it does look like that they're over that way more. They're actually not. They're in the middle, but it's because of the angle of them. Um, so what I did is I added something extra to the mantle here to fill in that space. Um, Navon said, 3.20, I'm a night owl. I'm usually up most of the night to sleep half the day. Oh, okay. <laughs> bit like me. My days start late, but I'm usually, um, I'm up really late, but then my days start late. <laughs> I'm a bit the same. Um, all right, so now with our little animals, they are all going to be double mounted because I want them to sit up a bit higher than the stockings so that they're sitting over the stockings. So I'll turn them over and we're going to double mount them. We just need one on the little, um, the little hamster. I keep on wanting to call him a gerbil for some reason. Why is that? Isn't a gerbil smaller, like a mouse? We don't, I don't think we have gerbils here in Australia. Oh, I've got to do two layers. I only did one layer on the cat and the dog. Um, Navon, are gerbils like a little mouse? They're, are they smaller than a hamster? Because a hamster is similar to our guinea pig, I think. We, uh, I used to breed guinea pigs when I was a kid. Actually, a few times I bred guinea pigs when I was when I was young, and then again when I was a teenager, I bred gerbils. Look like ah, waiting for the rest of that sentence. <laughs> gerbils. All right, so we'll put our little doggy on. We're going to put all of our little animals at a bit of an angle, like so. We want them to be over the um, the top of the stocking. There we go. Gerbils look like a mouse. Oh, yes. Okay, good. I was correct. Yeah. Cool. And then our cat. So we've got to watch the positioning of our animals now with our sentiment. We don't want them covering up our sentiment and our Christmas hat as well because our Christmas hat is going on to our little hamster, our little hamster dude. He's very cute. Okay, so now with the hat, the hat is going to be double mounted, but I'm just going to put, um, did I have a, let's see. Yes, double mounted, um, but up towards the top so that the bottom section is left free to overhang the little hamster's head. Um, oh, you're watching me and the Olympics, Navon. Ah, awesome. Having the Olympics been great. It's been a really good distraction at the moment too with everything that's going on, I have to say. Oh, I think I haven't left enough space with the, with the, ah, oh, I haven't either. I haven't left enough space. Hang on, I'll see if I can move this little guy down a bit. Wait on, I'm going to change to my spatula end on my take your pick tool and see if I can just lift him up a little bit. Put him down a bit lower. can go over the over the um, berries a little bit more because I'm going to be adding some rhinestones to those berries anyway and then the hat no, I need to take the large ones off the hat I'm gonna to have to change that for small ones all right see if I can get them off oh good they didn't stick too tight they're coming off yeah I'll use minis 
uh, the mini dimensionals because I'll have more space then to be able to position that hat. So two layers. There we go. I actually haven't heard of any of the um, I'm a bling bling, a bling lover, bling everything. Oh, yes, I agree for sure. <laughs> Let's see, is that going to fit now? Oh, yes, that'll be good now. All right, and I'll just add a little bit of, um, I haven't heard any of the Olympic results from today yet, Navon. How's the Olympics going today? My girls have been watching a fair bit of the Olympics, but I've missed a lot. I did see some gymnastics last night and a couple of nights ago as well. I love watching the gymnastics. That's been pretty good. And some of the swimming. Our Aussies do quite well in the pool usually. Um, yeah, but the Olympics. I think didn't the American girl win the um, gymnastics, I think? Um Oh, you like the gymnastics too. Yeah. I mostly watch the gymnastics and the all-round gymnastics gold medal winner was from your hometown where you live. Oh, wow. That is so exciting. Oh, my goodness. The celebrations when she comes home, hey? Everyone will be so excited when she gets back home. That's awesome. All right. So we're going to now add. I'll move that out of the way. Um, I'm adding, where are my little bits? My little, um, sorry, me reaching across there. I was looking for my little pieces. I couldn't find where I put them. I'm now going to add my little sprigs here on my mantle and my little bow. So I'll get some glue. How are things going um, where you are, Navon, in terms of COVID? Are you are things settling down over there where you are? Or are they are you safe now, or is it still going crazy? We're actually here in um, Sydney. We're actually in lockdown at the moment for another month because things are going crazy here in our state, in New South Wales, and I think Victoria too. I think Victoria's gone into lockdown, but I'm not sure if they've got as long in lockdown as us because our numbers are just going crazy right now so crafting is a great um distraction isn't it uh not really with the new one it's not looking very good i'm sure we'll be wearing masks again very soon ah no yeah this delta strain is shocking so contagious yeah not good not good I keep on saying we will come out of it at some stage. But aren't we lucky to have our craft, though? Keep us occupied. Oh, I dropped my little bow. Keep us occupied. Give us something to do. And we can share it with others, which is the best part. I love sharing my craft with other people. There we go. All right. We are ready to bling, and then we will be done. Mammoth. Um mammoth effort on this one hey <laughs> and i've got a big cleanup job to do afterwards as well all right so um i'm going to add some more wink of stella to this little red bow i forgot to wink of stella that one before and then we'll just let that dry a minute while i bling the other things oh and i forgot to get out my um silver and gold pearls i forgot to get them back out i'll have to go and grab them they're just behind me but i'll color this first and we're going to add these ones finished with all my dimensionals so they can go out of the way um i think i finished with my wink of stella grab my pearls that are in here there they are. We want some of the silver ones. I think I've just about finished all the gold ones in that pack. All right. Um, so we'll add these ones. And excuse the mixer if you can hear the mixer. Actually, it's the, um, it's the blender. The girls must be making smoothies. Uh, okay, so I'm using some of the little silver pearls on the top of each or on the hanger part of each of the um, 
stockings so that it looks like they're actually pinned onto the mantle. There we go. Good. And then we're going to use some of the red rhinestones. Love these. These get a lot of use at Christmas time, don't they? Does everybody use the red rhinestones for their Christmas projects? I'm going to add one in the center of that bow and one in the center of that bow. I am going to add one to the red one too, but we're going to let that wink of Stella dry for a minute. And then I'm going to add over the top of the berries. You could add wink of Stella to the berries, but the red rhinestones just give it so much more dimension and pop. So we'll do that there. There we go. All right. And hopefully, hopefully this will be dry enough to add that red one there. There we go. I think we're finished. Let's have a look. Let's bring in our other one, our finished one, and just see. Let's compare. Did I get everything on there? I think so. I think we are done. There we go. There is, let me move over that way. So they're in the middle of the screen. <laughs> So there is my animal Christmas stockings done. So now I've got two of them to send out for Christmas. Aren't they so cute? <laughs> um, oh, so everyone's loving the Wink of Stella. So Navon loves the Wink of Stella. Glenda said very cute card. Love it. Thank you, Glenda. And she also loves, um, uh, oh, yes, always, Glenda. I think you're referring to the Wink of Stella. Um, Navon said she's been doing Stampin' Up! since it first started. Oh, have you really? Wow. However, uh, many years it's been going. Oh, however many years it's been going. Yeah, 30. What are we up to now? 30. Is it 32? 32, 35. 35 years. Um, you're 77 years old and you know it was when you're in your 50s when you started. Oh, wow. That's amazing. You've been with the company for such a long time. I'm a relatively newbie then compared to you. I'm going to be five years next month. Oh, there you go. Oh, good night, Leslie. Thank you so much for staying with me with that. Thanks, Fee. Thanks, Glenda. I'm going to quickly tip the camera up um, to forward facing so that I can say goodbye to you all face to face. So let me just quickly do that. All right, here we go. We'll just quickly flick that up. There we go. And I'll just adjust those lights. Oh, I probably look like a hot mess now. So <laughs> after all that work, there we go. Beautiful. Great. So let me hold up my cards. I've got two now, I'll hold them both up. Let's go over that way. And I'll smile for the camera so I get a nice shot of that one for my um, my cover of my YouTube video when I upload this to YouTube. This one's gonna take a while to upload to YouTube. It was so long. Oh, I hope you really like it. It's a very cute card, very fiddly. As I said, it was. I warned you at the beginning, it was going to be a big project. <laughs> but super worth it, I think. Don't you think? So cute. So, so cute. I love this suite. This suite is a fun one. I want to play with more of that DSP now too and do some things with the DSP and the felt. Got to play with that felt. So I hope you're all excited for the new mini catalogue tomorrow and celebration. Remember about that. Um... And um, yeah, I really look forward to seeing what you all purchase, all of your beautiful projects you're going to make. I'm super excited. So if you've got any questions about any of the products I've used today or anything, um, anything to do with Stampin' Up, um, any of the new products, or if you need help with anything, or you have questions, feel free to reach out to me and ask me. Um, send me a private message or um, give me a, a text message or a call or something. Um, good night, Navon. Thank you so much for staying with me. I hope you sleep well and I hope you have a good day to tomorrow, whatever time you end up getting up. <laughs> um, 
No worries, Rose. You enjoy your dinner. I need to go and do that too. Organize some dinner for the family and find out what's happening. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. Um, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Um, I might be playing with some more new product next week. We'll see um, because it'll be exciting. The new catalog will have launched. So if I don't see you beforehand, I look forward to seeing you all again next Monday at four o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time. Until then, happy crafting everyone. Bye.